tunnel vision inside Cause you're just not right Though it feels so right Maybe if these things were different Different from all Can't help but fall, baby It's just not fair Cause we seem to be the same Why are we here? You know, there's so much chaos in the world. You got the news scaring you. You got social media, Will Smith smacking folks. You know? Uh, you, got, <laughs> you got Ukraine and Russia. Um, just so many anxieties, so many things happen in the world. And sometimes we feel like, okay, there's gonna be this savior or something's gonna happen, right? Like the Avengers are gonna assemble right. and take us away from everything that's going on. It kind of makes me think about the 11th hour, you know, the 11th hour miracle. Y'all know what that is? It's pretty much when everything is, you know, when there's total chaos, mm -hmm. travesty, then out of nowhere there's a miracle. You need that kidney transplant. And no one in the hospital has it, but in the last minute, at 11.58, at 11.59, <laughs> there's the miracle. Right. But the way things are going, what if that miracle doesn't happen? Like, what if no one shows up? Like, where are we? How do we get back to the core? How do we get back to our spirit? How do we get back to who we really are? How do we get back to our purpose? How do we get back to understanding why we're here when all this is happening? You know? And then that's when we talk about the 12-hour miracle. When the plane crashes and we survive, and who do we become in that moment when it's survival? makes me think about COVID-19, like we all became survivors. Right. Definitely. Definitely. You know what I mean, to a certain point. But very important part of why we're here is our spirit. Because our spirit was created by, our, by God before we even got here. But are we in touch with our spirit? Depends on um, what you're talking about when you say being in touch with it. I believe that when you have your spirit, all of us are spiritual beings, but when you are in touch with your spirit and in touch with God, that means you build that relationship. And building a relationship means that you're spending time, you're, you're uh, talking to him, you're, uh, you actually build conversation. Right. And conversation could be anything. It could be waking up and just saying thank you. Mm -hmm. You know, My biggest thing is when I do something for somebody and they don't, they don't say thank you. You know, and in order in order to get close to somebody, you have to know um, what you do and how it affects them. Right. So, I feel like being being in touch with with, with your spirit, you have to build that relationship with them. Indeed, I also feel like um, grace. Um, in order for you to get to that point, you have to give yourself grace, and you have to give others grace. Um, you have to acknowledge ego, um, and you have to be aware of the changes and the choices that you make. Um, ultimately, I feel like that's a deeper way of getting more in tune with your spirituality and God. Also, uh, faith. Um, and faith, you know, is God has done all these wonderful things. He has this proven right. track record, all these miracles, um, you know, so he really don't have anything else he need to prove to us, but, you know, but his word. Like, I've already, I've already shown you everything I can do. I need you to keep faith in my word. When I right. tell you I'm going to bring something forth to you, mm -hmm. you know, I don't have to give you a preview. It's on the way. I just need you to follow my laws and decrees, and it's going to come through. Yes, ma'am. So faith is actually outside of the physical world. But we live in a very physical place. Right. And even our spirit, we don't ever get to see our spirit, but we see our spirit in laughter and sadness and grief. But in this world, we are having more and more faith in the material and the physical mm. things. We rely on those things so much. Yeah. So how do we get in touch with our spirit? Because I think spirituality has become somewhat of a buzzword. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like mm -hmm. a trending topic. Right. You know, it's like people got the tarot cards, they got the zodiacs, and they're con they're concerning that spirituality. But I think my understanding of spirituality is understanding yourself so much that you can have faith in the things you do not see. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. Because right. even Definitely. having faith in yourself, because sometimes you don't, you, you ever like look at somebody like, man, I wonder how, what they think of me? Mm. Or what, yeah. <laughs> how do I uh, impact somebody? Yeah. You know, and that's based on your spirit, based on knowing yourself. 
you know, but like, how do you guys be in tune with your spirit? Um, I feel like acknowledging the subconscious mind. Um, so you have your conscious mind, which is pretty much in a nutshell, um, the things that you put on the forefront. Your subconscious mind are the things that typically people worry about or that they're fearful of. Um, but those are the things that you have to be in tune with to right. free yourself, which right. is the subconscious. So um, ultimately that way. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I think being in, in, in building that relationship with your, with your spirit mm -hmm. um, would mean that you're tapped into your unconscious mind because your spirit has... Uh, According to the word, it says that there are God gives our spirit um, wisdom that mm -hmm. that's hidden, and that would be your your unconscious mind, it, the things that you really are not tapped into, mm -hmm. and the only way to get tapped in is to really um, build on it, you know. And we have our our relationship with with God that uh, where God speaks to our spirit does not necessarily speak to physical because mm -hmm. the physical is not really that important. Right. You know, the flesh is one thing, but the spirit is another. And to be in in cahoots with your spirit, um, you really have to you really have to build that relationship. I think you have to uh, take time by yourself to spend that time alone, you know, meditate, talking to him by yourself, really removing yourself from these worldly things to really hear yourself, hear him, because the world can easily distract you and take you off course and you're not going to hear the message. You're not going to see what it is that's being sent to you if you're constantly, you know, have these distractions in front of you instead of removing yourself outside of those, spending time with self so you can just hear that voice as clearly as possible. Right. But you said a key word, distractions. I think the world is full with distractions oh, right now. Definitely. A lot of anxieties, yeah. a lot of fears. Mm -hmm. And when you say distractions, I'm gonna be real. Um, starting off this year, I started meditating more, taking more time to self. I had to get off of social media just for my own sanity. Right. But I know that everyone's able to do that, right? Yeah. People run their businesses off social media. Some people have their, um, you know, they're entrepreneurs. Mm -hmm. How do we filter the distractions? Because the world keeps us so busy. If it's not your job, if it's not your children, if it's not your, even your hobbies. I mean, your hobby is your hobby and you use it for like, your own, I guess, sanity. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, that hobby is part of your busy mind, right. you know? Mm -hmm. I think balance. There's balance in everything. You have to have balance in everything you do. You know, so even if your business is on social media, it's knowing, hey, keeping this business mind frame from only doing this because, yeah, I've ran a business off social media and it's easy. I'm working on this. Let me scroll for a little bit up, mm -hmm. get back. Let me get back to same <laughs> right. focus, you know? So it's just really having that balance, balance and knowing when to turn things off. But again, that's knowing self and. It's a world of open tabs. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, <laughs> I myself have like six emails, you know? And uh, we all got a Snapchat, TikTok, yeah. Instagram, <laughs> a Facebook, mm -hmm. and we're reading messages from a million places, mm -hmm. and we're in tune with everything. We're like, oh, this is happening. Oh, you see what happened here? And then, then you, right, the core of you, mm -hmm. right, is un is left unanswered. Mm -hmm. What keeps you distracted is, or a distraction is something. Knowing that you have your your purpose, knowing that you have a task at hand, you you have your own time clock. So anything that's gonna keep you away from that, you, you spoke on open tabs. If you have so many open tabs on a computer, that computer slows down. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you, you really won't be able to get anything done. And if you have a lot of distractions, you, you might as well forget about your task. So what do you cut off? What do we cut off? Because everything seems to be just as important. Right. You know what I mean? I guess prioritizing. I don't wanna miss that event. I don't wanna miss mm -hmm. this live. I don't wanna like, how do we prioritize our spirit, our well-being? You have to center your things. Center your, center, if, if you have a distraction, you have to center your events and everything around your purpose. Ooh. You're not just going to live without purpose and live. Not, like, the, not, the, <laughs> not the P word. Because <laughs> right. uh, purpose, right? Yeah. Why are we here? Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. And your spirit, you, if you tap into your spirit, if you tap into your spirituality, then you'll really know why you're here. We're not living here just to work a nine to five. Mm -hmm. We're not living here just to please our friends. We have purpose. Right. And mm -hmm. when you fulfill your purpose or when, as you pro progress in life and you fulfill your purpose, you'll get rid of the distractions. 
Wow. Your spirit will move for you on your behalf and remove the distractions. So moving in spirit and not of the flesh, not of the world. I think that's hard sometimes because the spirit makes us do some things that we're not comfortable with. It makes us cut off friends. Mm. Right. It makes right. us cut off family members. Mm. Yes. <laughs> the spirit will send us into isolation at times. Mm-hmm. And because um, it knows what we need. Yeah. I, I think also um, I have this quote and I say that every transaction with a person is a purchase. So the people that you spend your time with, the people that you pay attention to is ultimately what you buy into. So either you're going to buy into an appreciating asset or a depreciating asset, but either way you're making some type of purchase. So that goes in line with what you guys were just saying, like just making sure that you're being intentional with mm -hmm. the things that you spend your time with, the people that you is spending your time with, the people that you're paying attention to, the things that you're paying attention to, because that reflects on spirit as well. Absolutely. Yeah, I Absolutely. like that word intentional. It's very, you know? very key in this, moving in purpose with intention and stuff and making right. sure everything's aligned for that purpose, you know, because, yeah, you have all these things going, but you, like Aaron said, you want it to all align with this path mm -hmm. that you're setting up for yourself because if this doesn't align with my purpose then I need to remove it right. but again spending time with self getting to know spirit this for spirit to tell you hey we need to remove and being that. ready to receive <coughs> a lot too. of the times people are not ready to receive and most of the time people are not vulnerable with themselves enough to be able to receive. Mm. So um, just being intentional with making sure that you know that you're deserving of what you're asking for, of what you're wanting, and that you're putting yourself in a position to receive that. Yeah, that worthiness, mm -hmm. that's a word, mm -hmm. that's a word I think a lot of people struggle with. Um, I can say for myself, like last year was a tough year. Um, I went through a period of time where I didn't think I was worthy enough to lead. I didn't think I was worthy enough to have success. Right. I didn't think I was, and I was, I mean, I probably was the furthest I was from myself for a long time because I did not think I deserved it. Yeah. You know, people be like, man, you're doing great. You look good. You're fit, you know, you're just, and you're like. But, but I feel like this. Right. right. Mm -hmm. I don't see it. I don't right. feel it. Yeah. But then you had to tap into self. Mm -hmm. You had to tap into yourself. And, and that, sometimes that requires isolation. Mm -hmm. Like getting away from everything yeah. and everyone to really face yourself and right. face the music. Mm -hmm. People nowadays are afraid to face themselves because they don't want to bring up those ugly skeletons in the closet to fully dismiss them. Because I, too, at a point in my life, you know, was like, if I don't wake up tomorrow, I deserve it. I don't deserve happiness. Right. I don't deserve to succeed. You right. know, I felt like that until I found God. Until, and I've always known God, but in my household, it wasn't something, you know, that was pushed, like right. building that relationship with him. That was something that... I had to, well, he, well, I shouldn't say I, I had to find, because he always is like, come on, I'm right here, I'm, I'm right here, <laughs> right, right, you right. know, come, I'm, I'm just waiting for you to turn around, I keep poking you on the back, mm -hmm. and you know, it, it finally got to a point in my life where I was, I was tired of feeling like that, I was tired mm -hmm. of saying that I'm not worthy, right. I was tired of feeling like I don't deserve stuff, and just finally gave it all to him and surrender yes yes surrendered and you know started to so find good. and i'm still finding me mm -hmm. you know even at this age and point in my life you know i'm still growing you know in there mm -hmm. and stuff and I, and I plan on not i plan on to not stop growing right. in that area of my mm -hmm. life yeah you said something about the household and it made me think about foundation right yes. um growing up spirituality was not something that was heavily practiced until I went to Haiti. Like, then I learned about spirituality from a totally different context. Because growing up in the States, what we learn about is religion. Mm. And we sometimes think spirituality and religion are the same thing. Mm. Because religion is a border. I think it sometimes limits our spirit, our spirit right? Because it's like, hey, you got to follow these rules. You got to stay within these walls. And if not, right. We can't help you, <laughs> you know? And, um, and I think mm -hmm. spirituality is moving without borders, you it's know? forgiving. Yeah, yeah, because faith is something that, if you don't see it, how can you put a border around it, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? Because there's been times I've asked God for something, and he turned around and gave me 10 times, 100 times more. Mm -hmm. right. And there's been times where I ask him for something, I get nothing at all, you right. know? Right. And I think understanding the difference between how we saw spirituality and religion also depends on how we even engage in it. Because right. for the longest time, I thought spirituality was like some 
ooh, spooky stuff. You know, like some, uh, what am I about to do? I'm about to chant and do some, I like meditate. Is that, the, is that the same thing as praying? Uh, yeah. What spirits are we conjuring, you know? Mm -hmm. But right. like, um, I want to know, like, what are some of your experiences between, uh, and the differences between spirituality and religion? I came across something uh, the other day <clears throat> and it really spoke to me. It said, uh, religion is for people that, do, that don't want to go to hell and spirituality is for people that been there and don't want to go back. Dang, that's good. And, yeah, and that Dang. takes me back to, like I said, a point in my life where I was like, I don't deserve the happiness. What if, if I don't wake tomorrow, it's because I deserve it. I'm an awful person, you know? And I refuse to go back to that hell that I had myself in, because it wasn't it wasn't God that put me there. I, pl I placed myself in that hell, right. you know? And through spirituality, I've come out of that, and I'm not going to go back. Yeah, I, um, it's funny that you say that, because I feel like, when it comes to religion, and we're speaking on that, um, heaven and hell, I feel like that's a mindset, you know, mm -hmm. depending on where you put yourself, right. what you're thinking. Um, religion for me was a foundation to um, spirituality. Um, now, I'm not against religion at all. I feel like some people, it is required. Some people, um, you know, they need those guides and those principles to help them get closer to God. Um, but ultimately, um, on my journey with religion, um, it brought me closer to my spirituality because it showed me, because of the type of church that I grew up in um, and the people that I were around, mm -hmm. um, it showed me what I didn't want to, mm. like, you know, gotcha. go, like the journey. I didn't want to go on that type of journey because I didn't like what I was seeing, what I was feeling um, when I was in that environment. So to each his own, but religion definitely was like a good foundation for me. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Most people don't even know what the spirit is or what our spirit does for us. So I, I think that's, that's important to talk about too. We can talk about our relationships, we can talk about our experiences, but we, the most important thing to talk about is what a spirit is, what our spirit is. I believe that, and you don't have to agree with me, this is not a conversation to agree <laughs> on, but my spirit, could be the same as yours, I believe it is. It's a piece of our creator that was placed inside of us. And of course, you know, our creator is, doesn't want us to be robots. Yeah. So we have the option to say yes or no. Yeah. Our spirit is always gonna say yes, and we're gonna fight against it because mm -hmm. we're flesh and we're gonna say no. So it's, it's the spirituality is the battle between yes and no, good and evil. Conscious and the subconscious. Mm -hmm. all, all life long, there, there are decisions. We have to make decisions in everything we do, whether it's in school, our jobs, friendship, relationships, whatever you do, and it's a constant battle. So to be able to be tapped in with your spirit, your spirit is not gonna confuse you. It's gonna always be in a positive light. It's gonna want you to do good. It's not gonna say, hey, don't do that. That's, that's, that's too good for you, you know? <laughs> We're not supposed right. to fight against it, but it is a constant fight. And as soon as we decide to uh, say no to flesh and kill our flesh mm -hmm. daily is when we'll be truly tapped in with our creator. Well, flesh feels good, man. Not going to lie to you. <laughs> it feels so good. We're in a physical world. Yeah, pleasing the spirit sometimes requires me to do things that I do not really enjoy. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Um, uh, just to be completely transparent is... Sometimes it feels better to please self. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I tell my clients all the time, be comfortable with being uncomfortable. Mm. Okay. Because like if you're that. comfortable all the time, then that's you're gonna stay there. You're right. not gonna move. You're not gonna want to get up because you're happy where you are. You're staying mm -hmm. complacent. Well, let's talk about the twelfth hour again, right? The twelfth hour is when everything has hit the fan, but there's no solution, right? How uncomfortable have we been these last two, three years? How uncomfortable have we been? from dealing with the Black Lives Matter movement, mm -hmm. from dealing with COVID-19, from dealing with just... Lockdown, yeah. And are you comfortable with being uncomfortable? If you're tapped in with your spirit, then you're gonna be comfortable. Right. Yeah, I mean, it, your spirit leads you. And again, in, in goodness, not in, in evil. So if you have all of this chaos going on around you, you're gonna be at peace if you're really tapped into your spirit. If you really know what to, what to leave out, like the distractions, all of those things, all of those big events is nothing to, to your spirit. You still feel yeah. empty sometimes. 
but that's when spirit comes into play to let you know, hey, I'm still here. Because you're going to feel alone sometimes. That's, yeah. It's human nature. You're going to feel alone. But even in your loneliness, like, I'm still here. Like, I'm right here beside you, mm -hmm. you know. That goes back to the purpose. <laughs> With all of this chaos, mm -hmm. are you going to keep moving forward or are you going to stay there? Okay, but yeah, like you said, uh, even through all the chaos, if you're aligned with spirit, you, you know that there's still light at the end of the tunnel. You can't see it right now because chaos is there to distract you, to make you feel like there's no end game to mm -hmm. everything. You have to be aligned with yourself. You have to, be, you have to believe. You have to know that. Keep the faith. You have to always see that moment of transparency and clarity. Mm. Like, you have to believe that even when there's a bunch of chaos going on, you have to know in your core, mm -hmm. in your spirit, in your soul, that it's going to pass right. and everything is going to be okay. Yeah, there was a moment where I really didn't think everything was going to be okay. And it's like that sometimes. Yeah, yeah I, I, I have to be honest with you guys. My mother had got COVID around the same time I had COVID. And I was at a point where I was like, man, do not do this to me. Don't. Don't. Because my mother, um, to me, I consider her my guardian angel. I consider her my everything. I consider her, not my everything, of course, but you know what I mean, yeah. in what context. <laughs> um, some people might call me a mama's boy, but I could care less because I really do love her. And she always supports me and everything that I do. But in that moment of truth, where your mother is sick and you're watching on TV, everybody's dying. And the numbers are, you know, now they're not putting the numbers on TV, but every day they're like, oh, pff, six, 600,000 people. And you're like. <laughs> yeah. But see, that's, a scare tactic. that's when balance come into play. So the way that I go about thinking is if something is like this, it can go like this. So, for example, you've seen the numbers on TV. If I know that they're saying that it's X amount of people that's dying, then I also know that there's a good amount of people that's not. Mm -hmm. So you have to give yourself that balance sometimes. Like, sometimes it's not just out in the open for you. Mm -hmm. And that's the moment of clarity and transparency that you have to be ready to receive is knowing that, yo, if it's like this, then I'm pretty sure if it can, it can go like this. Diseases, for example, if you can get something, you got to know that you can get rid of it. Right. might be hard. You know what I'm saying? Right. But it's a balance to everything. Nothing is just one way. That's not how God designed us. Well, I, I know. I know. <laughs> but and I get it. You know, you know, <laughs> outside, if it's somebody else's parent had caught COVID, I'd be like, hey, man. You be all right. <laughs> you know, positivity. Yeah, I'm like, hey, man. You'll probably be okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. But when it's your mom, you're like, balance. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and you feel like positivity. Uh, What's that? Yeah, like in that moment, you're like, you're trying not to, sh you know, I'm on calls with her, video calls, you know, you're trying to stay strong. Oh, I love you. Yeah. <laughs> for real, you're trying to stay strong for her. You're just trying to stay strong. And you're just like, but in your spirit, deep inside, everything is messed up. Mm. That faith thing is out the window. You're like, bro, you about to take my mom. That's crazy. Mm. I, thought I, I thought you loved me. I thought mm. you loved her. And then in that moment, you're stirred up. And then that's, I had a moment of truth for me. I'm like, bro, my spirit is out of whack. Mm. I am not here. I am not present. Mm. Might be a reason why you went through that. I mean, might be that he purposely placed that on her for you to realize. It has to be another way. <laughs> you know <what> I mean? <laughs> it's not. We got to go through the no, chaos. That's remember, not remember the story of Job? Yeah. And how Job was upright in, in all his ways. And, and Satan came to God and said, Hey, man, you know, I'm mm -hmm. trying. I'm trying. Get my hand at this guy. Let me, let me tempt him. Let me, let me try. Let me try him, God. I know, I know you say he's a good dude, but let me try him. So you, if we have this spirit that's supposed to be good, then we have to know that there's balance to that, mm -hmm. and there's a, a an opposite side to that. So when you were feeling that, you know that okay, all right, I want to be good. I want to feel good. I'm on this path right here, and then your car just flips over. There's good and there's evil, and it's a constant battle, the flesh against the spirit. It's like Marvel versus, <laughs> <laughs> versus Thanos. Come on. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. Have you guys ever been in a situation, because you talking about, like, a car flipping, you ever been in a situation similar to that where um, it could have been um, – a car crash or it could have been you about to fall or trip or something and in that moment you just naturally knew to like breathe 
-hmm. and it changed like the whole dynamic of what could have happened. Mm -hmm. But because you chose to have that one brief moment to just breathe and be calm, like you chose to be calm because the only two things that are really constant is change and choices. Mm -hmm. So you chose in that moment to have that breath and it changed the whole dynamic. I don't know about y'all, but I have those mm -hmm. quite often. Um, and more and more, I'm learning, um, I'm more intentional with it now. Typically, when it has happened, it's, it's kind of on a whim. But now, um, I'm more prepared. Still learning, still processing yeah. things, still have my moments where things are not so good as chaos. Um, but I'm learning now how to really take that breath and allow myself to be calm so that certain things just don't happen. It doesn't have to happen like that. Now, taking the breath, explain, walk me through that, because I'm breathing right now. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Because I, I think about, like, those moments where it's really hard to really register what's happening. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? Like, those moments of impact or, like, bro, I don't got time. I'm just mad. I'm, I'm angry. Or I react. Like, how do I say? <sighs> By choosing what you want to put your attention into. So, like I said earlier, it's all about what you choose to pay attention to and what you choose to spend time with. If you're feeling angry and you choose to spend time with that anger, then that's what that's going to be. But if you have that moment of balance in your mind and you give yourself the option to choose what you're going to do and what you're going to put your attention into, then that's just what it is. Right. So that's the moment. That's what the breath is for. Like, let me relax and choose the direction I wanna go in. Sometimes we choose violence, you know? <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes we choose violence, you know? Yeah, no but doubt. that's what that breath is for. And if you're going to choose violence, and this may sound crazy to some people, if you're gonna choose it, choose it consciously. Mm. Be ready mm -hmm. for what the outcome right. is gonna be, because a lot of the times we just react. Mm -hmm. You can choose violence if that's what you want, or you can choose to be calm, cool, and collected and move on. But you gotta still take that breath and be prepared for whatever is gonna come after whatever choice we make. But those things of like anger, sadness, <clears throat> you know, those for me, they're not things of God. Those are spirits, you know, attacking us. Mm -hmm. So when you do feel angry, the spirit of anger, you are not of my God, I, be, you know, I, I disagree. dismiss you. Yeah. you dis <laughs> I disagree because I think God, <laughs> God is a God of thunderstorms. Mm -hmm. God is a God of war. God is a mm -hmm. God of, I mean, one of the scariest things that's ever, like I ever had to experience in my life was walking, going on a hike in Alaska, right? Mm -hmm. It's beautiful views, beautiful trees. Mm -hmm. You see the ice cap on the mountain. You're like, man, this is, it feels like heaven on earth. <laughs> then you see a sign that says, beware grizzlies. You're like, oh, snap. <laughs> <laughs> grizzlies, you're talking about 10 feet bears that could yeah. end it all right mm -hmm. here. Yeah. But that's, that's the God we serve. That's mm -hmm. the God that exists. And the same God can come through with, you know, if it's loud enough, an avalanche will come down and tear everything down. So I do believe he is a God of anger too. Like, and he says it even in the word that says, be angry, yeah. sin yeah. not. And I think also too, when people think of anger, they think of like the worst thing possible. My mom, and I think y'all can probably relate to this, but my mom, when she gets real mad at my dad, like angry, she'll just be around the house cleaning up. <laughs> Don't oh, get me yeah. wrong, she, you know what I'm saying? She's still mad and you know she's mad, like mm -hmm. you know she's furious, but yeah, even with that anger, she's still choosing to maneuver a certain way, right. you know? So with anger, it doesn't necessarily mean that you're about to, you know, just go off and do like the worst thing possible mm -hmm. or hurt somebody or whatever, but you want to process that emotion, you know? But you're still choosing to, I don't want to say contain it, this is the best way to put it. Y'all ever seen Naruto? Well, look, I'm going off a way. Oh, oh. <laughs> seen Naruto? Okay, for <laughs> anybody that watched anime, Naruto, um, he was a boy, and there was a Nine-Tails fox. The Nine-Tails fox killed a bunch of people in the village. Okay. His father took the Nine-Tails fox and put it inside of Naruto. So growing up, of course, the village didn't want to deal with him because they knew that he had the Nine-Tails fox inside of him, which is pretty much an energy, a spirit. Mm -hmm. He had to learn growing up how to contain that energy, and he had to learn how to become one with it. So it was very much so still needed. He still needed that energy, you know, for certain things when he had to protect his right. village mm -hmm. and things like that but he knew how to um control it he knew how to be one with it to where it served a greater purpose mm. 
I like the way you said that. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I'm still going back to what I was saying. Um, yeah, okay, God does speak about how, you know, we, we arouse his anger and whatnot. But those feelings, you still can pray away. If that is not what you know is needed in that moment, if me staying angry, I'm not going to make the best decision. Take this away from me. This is not what I need. Yeah. You know, I still think that's, because that's what I do. If, I, if I'm getting caught up in that feeling, mm -hmm. you know, God, take it away. I don't, this is not, I'm, I'm going to do something dumb or I'm not going to do what you need me to do, you know, so. I think that goes back to, you know, if we bring it all back together, just being aware of mm. self mm -hmm. and being aware that, hey, I am a physical being. I am a spiritual being having a physical experience, mm. you know, and how, how in tune I am with my spirit is going to make me take that breath. It's going to be able mm. to monitor that anger, right. be able to know that, hey, this doesn't make me happy. I'm not happy about this situation. Right. I could choose to jaw this dude. <laughs> <laughs> or I can take a few steps the other way. Right. You know what I mean? Because if I draw him, he might draw me back. Right. You know what I mean? Ready for it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But if I, right. if I walk away and I take a deep breath, we can probably have a conversation. Mm. Right. And those are the choices we make when we live in spirit. But when we live in the flesh, we live a very reactionary life mm. where everything's a reaction, everything's a reaction, and then nothing really gets done. Right. You know, and I see, especially in today's society, when we're, like, I, I consider us in, in the 12th hour right now, you right. know? And everything has hit the fan. You know, we've realized that we can't trust our government. We can't trust our policies sometimes. We can't trust our health administration. Oh, yeah. You know, um, but how are we reacting? Mm -hmm. You know, are we indulging in the physical world where nothing is satisfying our spirit? Or do we tap in with our souls? We tap in with our spirit and go, how, do, how does me, how do I contribute to my community? How do I contribute to all of this? How do, I set a, how do I set apart from everything that's going on? How do I inspire in the midst of this time? You know, how do we align with one another? Because I feel like what we're doing here is, is powerful within itself because we're saying, hey, we're going to connect to the core to figure out a way to get us out of this, mm -hmm. you know? Because the plane has crashed, y'all. Right. We survived. We survived. We did. <laughs> I'm going to drink to that. I'm sorry. <laughs> But um, so what do you guys think about spirituality? How are you practicing it? Reading my word. Being nice to somebody who's not nice to me. Mm -hmm. Controlling my anger. Because there, there are some things that really, really upset me. Uh, and anger plus something else plus another thing mm. will have you flip upside down or flipping something upside down. So if you really, well, for me, when I really want to, come back down to earth I, I, I take a second and it may be you know go to the gym lift some weights um, a lot of people don't know but I, I'm a trainer so when I go to the gym I know that my goal is to maintain mental acuity that means I want to think and be focused so for me to, to really not knock somebody's head off or anything like that I, I'm going to go lift some, lift some weights or read a book Right, because right. the sometimes the words in a book can calm you down. Mm -hmm. yeah, absolutely, mm -hmm. I agree. Yeah, I make a conscious effort. I have to every day to put my most godly face on. Like I want when you see me, I want you to see Christ coming through my face. Like I want you to see that glow and that shine. And oh, you're people, blowing. Yeah, <laughs> um, but people make it difficult sometimes, and I sometimes lose myself in that when people are, because people are so nasty with everything that we've gone through and still going through in the world and stuff. You know, people are just automatically nasty, um, and I don't want to join you in your nastiness. I still want to bless you with kindness. Um, you know, I've had a situation where I'm sitting there minding my business, and I'm, it always happens <laughs> I'm, like I'm a female that is more than comfortable in her skin and body, and I love my crop top and stuff and so my little belly my well not little belly but you know my belly <laughs> will poke through or whatever but some um i'm working and somebody felt the need to you know let me know hey your belly i said I'm, I, and the way he said it i knew you know and i knew it was shade hey, uh, your belly <laughs> <laughs> i was like oh thank you love you know i'm okay you know uh, appreciate it well it don't look good and i reacted with violence and i kicked myself for a few days on that reacting, you know, taking myself down to his level, so to speak, instead of being 
you know, God bless you and your demons anyway, baby, and, <laughs> and, send, and send you on your way. Um, so, yeah, I, I have to make it every when I wake up and before I go to bed and pray, like, Lord, I want to put you in for first, you know, in everything that I do. I want people to see you this way. I can help to draw them closer to you. Yeah. What I'm currently doing um, is giving myself more grace. Um, that's been like, if I had to name this chapter of my life, <laughs> I would name it grace. Um, so I'm giving myself more grace. I'm being more intentional, um, speaking to myself, being a better friend to myself, because yeah. a lot of the times I'm not such a good friend to myself. Um, and so I'm being more intentional with that relationship, speaking to myself. Um, when I'm getting out the tub and I'm putting on my butter, I always talk about my butter. Um, <laughs> <laughs> my butter is everything. Mm -hmm. like, I genuinely enjoy so that process. Um, yeah, because I'm being intentional and I'm rubbing mm -hmm. and, you know, nurturing so myself in that moment. Um, I'm making sure that I'm surrounding myself around the right people as much as possible. Mm -hmm. And even if I do surround myself around, quote unquote, the wrong people, I'm using that as a time to learn, a time mm -hmm. to practice, um, a moment of clarity. Um, so just being more intentional right now um, is more, is more, how can I put it? Is more um, is more with the intention of just the overall growth. Like I have to make sure I am actually making sure that I grow. Yeah. Right, right, right. <laughs> um, and I'm saying that, and I'm speaking to myself while I'm also speaking to y'all. So um, yeah, just making sure I'm being more intentional yeah. and loving on myself and being a good friend. Yeah. Uh, something I've been practicing more now is. Meditation. Yes. It is so good. It's so good. It is so good. <laughs> <laughs> but I also noticed that you talked about ego. It will always come back. It's like, mm, don't meditate today, right? You don't need to. You did it yesterday. It's like, wait, but I need it. You yeah, know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that mm -hmm. discipline, like, mm -hmm. and that balance started to come in. But meditation has done a lot for me because I wear many hats. Y'all know I'm always working on a project. I'm always right. busy. Like. Is it a laptop, a notebook, a call? There's always something going on. But in meditation, I'm forced to shut it all down. Mm -hmm. Yes. <laughs> I'm forced to shut it all down and actually find out what's happening in here. Mm -hmm. Is there peace? You know, is there fulfillment? Because we can be busy all day and not fulfilling anything. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like a hamster on a wheel. What? <laughs> and he's going fast. <laughs> Still ain't getting nowhere. <laughs> How, how far am I? <laughs> what, same spot? What? What's my ETA? You ain't going nowhere. <laughs> you know what I mean? And meditation has been the ultimate spiritual practice. Yes. Because it's it's it brought my subconscious from out the veil. From out the veil. Mm -hmm. I was like, oh man, what's that over there? Right. I was able to come in touch with things that I didn't really know were there. You know what I mean? Good or bad. You know. And um, using affirmative action, because my love language is words of affirmation. Mm -hmm. But I always thought that it had to come from outside. No. Mm -hmm. But what I realized, I was like, man, what if I say these words to me? <laughs> to me. <laughs> and in meditation, I can do that. Because uh -huh. people won't know the words to say to you. They don't they don't know what you need. Man, mm -hmm. talk to Because people okay. need words themselves. Right. You know? We were talking last night about the, the words that I had on my mirror. Like, you're strong. You're great. You're this. You're that. What's this? What's oh, you're wealthy, <laughs> yeah, yeah. you're healthy, you're protected, you're a child of God. And I have to tell myself that. I'm looking in the mirror because I wrote them down, put them in red Sharpie so I know it's not, com it's not coming off the mirror. No matter how much I spray with Windex, <laughs> I can read it to myself every single day, you yeah. know, because I know what I need. I know right. what I want somebody to say to me. No one's going to say it. Nobody knows. Unless I tell you, hey, this is what I need. Can you tell me this? And most people, they're 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 not even on that type of timing. Nah, mm -hmm. bro. They, they want, they want. They got too many tabs mm -hmm. open. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know what yeah. I mean? And sometimes those words of affirmation, and I've run into this in my own meditation. It's like you're like, oh yeah, I'm wealthy, I'm prosperous. Then you go to your uh, mobile bank app. <laughs> <laughs> you go into your mobile bank app. You're like, but, I'm wealthy and prosperous. I'm wealthy and prosperous. <laughs> I'm still here. But we look. I think we look all too much for, especially when it comes to that word wealth, 
you know, mm -hmm. in our bank, you know, right. you know, mm -hmm. we look, we look for it in, in money deposits when, mm -hmm. you know, it's in spirit, it's in health, it's in adding, uh, having uh, added life added on to your life timeline. You know, mm -hmm. it's all those things that make you wealthy. It's the people that you surround yourself with, yeah. the conversations you have, you know, all those things, you know, make you wealthy, not just the dollar sign, right. you know, so if we stop looking for wealth, you know, in the most obvious of places that mean nothing because the dollar means nothing and start mm -hmm. looking, you know, at the small things, the simpler things, you know, where that make us wealthy, yeah. you know, you find fulfillment in those things. Yeah, it's crazy um, how we put so much of our purpose and fulfillment into money. Mm -hmm. And then we're watching how fast money is changing right, right in front of us, you That's know. Right. Uh, how much it goes. Right. How fast <laughs> it goes, I should say. Yeah, yeah because yeah. within our time, we've seen money change from being physical to card. Right. Now we're talking about digital currency. Right. Now imagine if that's what you base your value on. Mm -hmm. You have to change yourself constantly right. mm -hmm. in order to yeah. be existent. Nah. Mm. So you got to see where where your wealth really is. And I think you know, cheers to having spiritual wealth because mm. that's what we really need to aim for. Mm -hmm. You know, because if you're rich in spirit, then you live in abundance. Because then you realize, like, man, look at the trees, look at the sky, right. look at the oxygen, look at the people I get to surround right. myself with. Man. I'm good. I'm rich. Right. <laughs> right. Yeah. I'll drink today. Right. <laughs> I think we all should. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Just spiritual well. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Yeah. Y'all heard of um, forest bathing? Forest bathing? Forest bathing. Like, oh, like sun bathing yeah. and all that? Yeah. 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 If you, have y'all, have y'all done that before? I have. I mean, in North Carolina, yeah. there's so many places you could do it. Do you know that when you walk in without, without any distractions, without your phone, you know how much you're going to get out of that? Mm -hmm. yeah. If you just look around, you know, we're on our phones all the time, but if you walk, leave your phone alone, no f no phone calls, no messages, nothing, and you just go into a forest and just look around, you know how much grace oh, yeah. is in that forest? Right. Earthing, taking your shoes off, planting your feet and in just, the dirt. And just and feeling stuff. it. Connecting so with good. the world. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And just appreciating it. it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's so interesting you say that, though, because sometimes we have those experiences, but we only we do it to show off, like, oh, my God, I'm in On yeah. Instagram. I'm in the forest. <laughs> <laughs> the forest. Yeah. Like, outside. No. Hashtag outside. There you like, go. <laughs> take you a deep breath. And you said appreciation. We have to work mm. on appreciating ourselves more and appreciating the people around us yeah. Yeah. Um, to create that value. So we have to also know how valuable we are to ourselves, mm. for sure. Yeah. And that moment when I did go, um, well, I went sunbathing. That feels amazing. So I went sunbathing. And in that moment when you're just laying there, you're in the sun, and it's just like beaming on you. You got your eyes closed, and you mm. can feel the light right, all right here there, and just yes. over your body. like, And you just take that moment to really just appreciate something as simple as that. Whoa. Like, that yeah. feels amazing. <laughs> yeah, we can learn a lot from animals, you know, because uh, one of the most, I was at a, uh, in Rock Hill, and I saw this turtle, like, with his head up. It's like, <laughs> the sun, I'm like, Damn, really? That's that right. Well, right. Like, Animals are in tune with the sun. It was a video I was watching where, like, the room itself was like casted dark, but there was like a glimpse of light through the um, mm. window, and it was a bunch of cats. And of course, as the sun changed the where the light hit on the floor, it changed. But the cats would just move and just stay in right. that mm. that ray of light. You know, right. they wouldn't go into the darkness. They would stay in the light. Well. Mm. That's interesting. I mean, I'm not gonna lie though. Sometimes the darkness is necessary Very. to come out to, to come out to the light and appreciate mm -hmm. it, because um, you know, with everything that happened, you know, um, the Black Lives Matter, you see, I mean, watching that nine minute video when George Floyd was being mm. killed, and then learning that we um, had to wear masks and that we couldn't go outside, that was really hard, um, and just seeing all those things, it kind of took you to a place of darkness, yeah. you know. But now it makes me appreciate the light that much more, you know, and being in the 12th hour, coming out survivors as we are and going, OK, how do we make a change around us? Continuing to be the light. Right. We are, we are moving light. light. Mm -hmm. Wherever we go, people know by just looking at us. You don't have to speak. Right. You just you're just there. And people know that if they're sitting in darkness and somebody walks in and they're bright, vibrant, mm -hmm. that's where I want to be. Right. Right. That's what that goes back to what like what I said, like um, just wanting to put that godly face on. Like I want you to see that God light through me, you know, to draw you in, to bring you closer to him. You know, whether you didn't believe or you're not where you want to be in your spiritual walk. I want my light to, you know, cast on you 
you know, to bring you in closer. Right. Mm, no doubt. So, I mean, we're just going to continue to live in spirit and um, hold each other accountable, mm-hmm. you know, and um, mm-hmm. spread the message of living a spirit filled life. When you're caught up in your distractions and all the things that's going on, remember to get back in touch with your spirit, to get back in touch with your soul, get back in touch with, you know, the earth and with the core, with, with God. Because I think a lot of times we, we forget where we came from. Always ask yourself, why am I here? What purpose am I here to fulfill? I agree. And know that it's a journey. It's a process. Mm-hmm. Take your time. Give yourself grace. Just make sure you're being intentional. Enjoy the journey and process. Like, yes. It's not going to be easy. Okay. But enjoy the bumps and falls, scrapes and bruises. Like, mm-hmm. It's all a part of your growth. Like your, your, your war wounds are grace stories like don't don't knock them you know you know take you know take them like hold on to them enjoy them really get something out of them Mm. each step counts i tell my clients an apple is eaten one bite at a time so t take each bite (laughs) (laughs) take it it gracefully Mm -hmm. and keep it moving